Hello everybody, hope you guys are doing well today and I want to take this video to talk a little bit about Jaron Reed because quite honestly he deserves it after what he did on Sunday. Uh, Sunday was probably the best game of Jaron Reed's career, his whole career. He had eight tackles which tied a career high, he had a sack and a half, he had numerous other quarterback pressures, uh, he had a pass deflection and he anchored an elite run defense that allowed like 3.1, 3.2 yards a carry and less than 45 yards. Yeah, I think that's probably the best game of Jaron Reed's career. I think you could go through his entire game log and you would not find a game where he was more all around good at football than that. But um, three games in, having gotten through the uh, September selection of games because our next game is not until October, I want to ask. Is Jaron Reed playing the best all-around football of his career? And I can't believe I'm saying that. I can't believe I'm even bringing that up as a discussion. But really, is he actually playing the best football that he's ever played before? And I know people are in initially going to say, oh, it's only been three games. Yeah, it's only been three games, but I think there's a pretty big difference between three games and one game. Like, I wouldn't be saying this if it had only just been one game or even two games, but... Now we have three straight games where Jaron Reed has exceeded my expectations significantly because when we got Jaron Reed, I felt pretty confident in what we were getting. I felt like I knew exactly what we were getting. We were getting a guy who was solid, decent. He would do the work. He would fill his role. You'd never really complain about him. He'd never shock you or surprise you. He would just be the guy that you knew he was going to be basically his whole career. Just a guy who is effective, kind of jaggy, maybe a little bit better than a jag. And that's it. You can't look to him to be your stud. You can't look to him to be your star. You have to look at him as a role player that your other stars lift up. Through three games, that is not what we have gotten at all, I don't think. In fact, I think you could make a pretty compelling argument that through three games, he's been our best player. And this all stems, and I, I gotta admit, I did not think this was going to work as well as it has so far. This seems to stem from moving him from a role that prioritizes his pass rush abilities to a role that prioritizes his run stuffing abilities. He, I can't say he's playing nose tackle this year because we don't really have a nose tackle, but he's basically filling the one tech role for this defense because what we are playing is basically a slightly modified 4-3 defense with him as the one tech and with that one tech def one tech role not only is Jaron Reed spearheading a run defense that has been really good through 3 games one of the best in the league he's also affecting the game via his pass rush he's gotten numerous hits and hurries on opposing quarterbacks through three games. So he is still providing the juice. He is still providing some playmaking. Like I said, he broke, or excuse me, tied his career high in tackles in one game on Sunday. Nose tackles, one techs, rarely make that many plays in a game. And Jaron Reed did. And he's not sacrificing overall quality of run defense to make those plays. He's not getting caught out of position. He's not opening up huge run lanes by trying to chase down, chase stuff down. No, he's actually holding in solidly. And if you watch him play, if you watch Darren Reed play, you will see him holding up very well for a relatively undersized one tech. But to answer that original question, is Jaron Reed playing the best football of his life? I, w I want uh, everybody to uh, look over his career real quick here. Let's start with his rookie season in 2016. 2016, the Seahawks did have an elite run defense. They were seventh in yards allowed, first in yards per carry. It was a phenomenal run defense for the Seahawks. But Jaron Reed was not the featured part of that defense at all. In fact, he was way down the list. Um, that was back when we still had Michael Bennett. That was back when we had Cliff Averill. That was back when we had, um, we still had Bobby and KJ and Earl and Cam. Like, Jaron Reed played less than half the snaps and was not a big cog on that defense. So, that's his rookie year. 2017 was like the first year when Jaron Reed started to establish himself as one of the more important players on this defense. People got hurt, 
and Jaron Reed had to play more to help fill that gap. And he played okay, but you can see our run defense took a big step back this year. It was 19th in yards allowed and 14th in yards per carry. So it was an average run defense this year. The run defense regressed from elite to average. So Jaron Reed takes on a little bit of a bigger role, does a little bit more, but you can see the run defense start to get away from the Seahawks. Now you get to 2018, and this is the year that pretty much everybody would consider Jaron Reed's best season in the NFL. He had 10 and a half sacks, and him and Frank Clark basically carried all the water for our pass rush, and he did do that. He had 50 QB pressures according to PFF in 2018. However, our run defense became one of the worst in the league. It was 13th in yards allowed, but 30th in yards per carry allowed. We allowed nearly five yards a carry. And this was definitely one of those years where Jaron Reed was taking on a featured role in the defense. He was, by a pretty good margin, the featured interior defensive lineman, and our run defense just absolutely melted. So that gets you to 2019. This year, again, things just really aren't very good. 22nd in yards allowed, 28th in yards per carry. Another year where you're giving up almost five yards a carry. And Jaron Reed is, again, one of the featured guys on your defensive line. He's probably your featured interior defensive lineman. So the more Jaron Reed gets involved, it kind of feels like the more our run defense just gets away from us. And again, he's the three-tech. He's playing that three-tech role. He's more about getting to the quarterback. He's more about creating pressure. But his association with the defense is causing some kind of a run defense issue here. We can see that. 2020 is the one year where Jaron Reed was a huge part of a really good run defense. The Seahawks were borderline elite against the run this year. Fifth in yards allowed, fifth in yards per carry. However... This was also, I think, Puna Ford's big breakout year. I think that the improvement in the run defense in 2020, if you're going to associate it with anything, is probably more Puna Ford. So that was basically Jaron Reed's first five years with the Seahawks. Um, we had two years where we were really good against the run. One was Jaron Reed's rookie year where he had a diminished role. The other was 2020. And remember, by the way, while we're here, let's just recall that this was the year our pass defense was so bad, running the ball on us was kind of a waste of everyone's time anyway. But um, this, I think, was more about Puna Ford. And yes, there wasn't great stuff going on around Jaron Reed at times during these years, the 2017, 2018, 2019 years, but... Those were maybe Bobby Wagner's best seasons in the NFL, especially 2018. 2018 was probably Bobby Wagner's peak season as an NFL player, and our run defense still stunk. And if you're looking for people to try to put that on, you're going to get to Jaron Reed fairly quickly. So we can see that while Jaron Reed may be doing individually well, we can see that he's part of some pretty bad run defenses. 2021 for the Kansas City Chiefs. They did not have a good run defense. They allowed nearly five yards a carry. They were 21st in yards allowed, allowed almost 2,000 yards that year. And then you have Packers last year, 2022. He was a Packer last year. He played a decent amount for them. They had a one of the league worst run defenses. They allowed a full five yards a carry, 2,400 yards. Not good. Not good at all. In fact, borderline one of the worst in the league. So all these years, Jaron Reed has had a role in these these run defenses that are bad some of them are really bad some of them are like near the bottom of the league and this year so far I know it's early I know there's time for this to change but so far this run defense has been phenomenal and unlike most of these seasons he's actually been the focal point of the run defense like think about it our defensive line is not loaded to the gills with a bunch of guys who are dominant against the run. Draymond Jones was never known as a run defender when he was in Denver. And I do think Draymond Jones is playing the run pretty well so far, but that he's not some uh, prime Vince Wilfork type who's taking up all the attention from the blockers and Jaron Reed's job is easy. No. Um, we have Bobby Wagner back. That's helping a lot too. I think Jordan Brooks is playing pretty well. That's helping as well. But... By and large, this run defense has a lot of the same pieces as the run defense from last year that was one of the worst in the NFL. So it can't just be, oh, these players, um, uh, all these players around Jaron Reed are doing this. And it can't just be a coincidence that Jaron Reed is playing for the first time in his career, really, a one-tech role, and finally he's part of a really good run defense. 
And like I said earlier, he is getting to the quarterback still. He is making things happen in the backfield still. So you put all this together, and I'm feeling like Jaron Reed might be playing the best football of his career. I don't know if he can keep it up. He's an older guy. He's 31 years old. He might wear down by the end of the season. He might wear down against some of these other teams we play. Like, when we play the 49ers, are they going to be able to run the ball all over us with Christian McCaffrey and their running scheme? Um, When we play some of these other elite running backs that we're eventually going to have to deal with down the line, are they going to be able to run the ball all over us? That's possible. But it's looking to me like this run defense is at least credible. And that's a massive turnaround from where they were last year when they were one of the worst in the NFL. So, Jaron Reed, I thought he was just coming back to give us a decent season. So far, it's been a great season. And he may have come back here to give us that great season. So far, 7th in yards allowed on the ground and 3rd in yards per carry allowed. Absolute money. So, I don't know what else to say other than, Jaron Reed, you should have been a one-tech all along, I guess. You should have just been a one-tech because this is what you do. I'm not saying he was a bad three-tech. He had his moments, but overall, I don't think what he gave you as a three-tech was worth it compared to what he's doing right now as a one-tech. So I guess he should have just stayed in that role the whole time. All right, I will see you guys later. Go Hawks. Let me know what you guys think about Jaron Reed's season so far. I'm very impressed. I think he may have been our best player on defense through the first three games. And um, this is how... This is how this team gets to a good place. Spending a very, very minimal amount of money on a guy like Jaron Reed and getting special level play out of him. That is how you push the margins. That is how you ascend higher than you originally expected. Getting unexpectedly good contributions from guys like Jaron Reed. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. More videos coming later. Go Hawks. Shout out Jaron Reed.